Hey there, my friend. What's going on? And welcome back to your daily dose of Brood War. I am currently streaming on YouTube and Twitch, playing a bunch of ladder games and casting. If you want to come check it out, definitely test it. Come join me. I'm going to be having some fun there. And today, we're taking a look at a very special game here between Shuttle down here in the bottom right and his opponent Saxory now the reason we're taking a look at shuttle today is because in the ASL qualifier very recently he managed to take out Queen now Queen is not out of the ASL he still has another chance to qualify in day two which is today but that is huge guys that is a huge moment for a player like shuttle not only to qualify for ASL, but taking out the two-time ASL champion on his way to get there. So his PVZ must be on point right now. And a guy that we have been showcasing on the channel recently, Saxory, was performing incredibly well in the KCM team tournament. That was in 2023, just December of last year. He was doing fantastic. So we're going to be checking him out here today. And it looks like he'll start out with the overpool build. Very standard build. And especially on this map, it's going to be very hard to get your first hatchery down without being harassed by the probe. And we can see here, he was indeed harassed by that probe. He's going to have to throw the hatchery up here on his third base. And it's always an open question to me. Do you want to throw your third base up on this plateau here or do you want to drop it down on the low ground uh, over at this location I'm not sure I haven't decided yet I feel like this is much more open uh, but it's a little easier to defend with some buildings and uh, you know sunkins here and then have like um have a block over here as well I feel this can be, it feels a little bit more safe to me. Whereas when you have to block on the high ground and then you're kind of blocking this ramp as well, um, but you have to be able to move your units over here to assist, it, it just feels a little bit rough to me. I don't know, that just my bias here, but Saxory seems to feel that this base is going to be better for him. Yeah, it feels closer, but when I look at it, it's not doesn't really seem that much closer, right? Like, I guess just coming down here feels a lot faster than going all the way across and up and around to get into this base, I guess. But it's really not that big of a difference. Now, we did see Shuttle throw down a Forge Fast Expand here. Doesn't cut too many corners just yet. Getting into a cybernetic score. Standard play would be that Stargate follow-up, but... Maybe Shuttle's found a new way to play this matchup. Now, he seemed like a, kind of a pioneer back in the day. I felt like he was going to do great things. I think it was like season 12, something like that. Season 13, when he was really performing in PvZ. I thought he was going to go all the way and get an ASL victory... But he's kind of fallen into the background since then. And he still plays in a lot of Pro League. He still still does appear in a lot of KCM. He has a very interesting personality. And his stage presence in ASL is always funny. But he's been consistently getting into ASL over and over again. But he's not someone I've been looking to, to actually take the ASL for quite a long time. More so just a like a round of 32, a round of 16 player is what I the vibe that I felt from him. But after taking out zero in the qualifier, man, he must be really practicing hard this season, getting into great shape. He's gonna be able to sneak a couple of zealots in onto this third base. Can he get a drone kill? Great uh drone drill here. Ooh, really messing up that first zealot. The second Zealot's going to get behind the Mineral Patches, but great surround here too. Four Lings able to get on top of that. 
doesn't even lose a single ling there. Beautifully done by Saxory. Now that is not easy to do. But he managed to kill both Zealots without losing a drone or a ling. Very well done by him. And now he's got a big kind of momentum boost here in this game. Because really you can't even think about moving out with less than five Zealots at this point. There's already enough to take on two. And just a few more could pop out at any moment. So he's going to have to wait for a good chunk of Zealots. He's actually added on a second gateway here, which is a little bit interesting. He's scouting everything out. He sees the Spire. The second gateway was added on pretty early. Going for double DT follow-up. Interesting. Okay. All right. This feels like a mini build, actually. Going for two DTs like this. If he continues to build Zealot in DT and go for some sort of push, that could be something. That could be something very difficult to hold on against here for Saxory. But he's throwing down some creep colonies. Getting his defenses in place. The linchpin of this attack is going to be the Corsairs. Can the Corsairs come in, fight all of the Scourge and Muta? Finish them off and clear the Overlord so that the DTs can do their work. DTs still do have very high DPS, even without being, uh, you know, the beneficiary of that cloaking. He's going to sneak in here before the Sunken Colony is done. And he might actually pick this off. This is a big kill here. He gets the Sunken Colony and now he's going to get in on top of these Overlords with three Corsairs. We don't have any Scourge. Okay, we do have Scourge coming in from behind there. Go ahead and hit that. And he's going to go right after this hatchery. But can he actually finish it off in time? That's a lot of DPS. The, uh, the DTs are going to be able to finish that off. Hatchery has been cleared. But how much is that actually going to matter? Well, it's going to slow down the patches over here on the left-hand side. These patches are still going to mine pretty efficiently. Once the drones have been returned, but he's sneaking back around with another two DTs. Can he get in somewhere else? Heading towards this natural, he could just run right by here while the Mutalists are being controlled. Look at this. DTs run right past. No kills on them yet, but that's about to change. Here comes the DTs into the main, dealing some damage, getting a few drone kills. Three kills so far. He will go after the Spire. Guaranteed. I've played against enough Protoss players to know what this is. They're always their first target. Getting rid of this building and preventing that plus one armor is huge. Now going off after the spawning pool here. Can he actually get that? He does. We'll pick off that DT and should find this one as well. No problem. That does go down. Two more Zealots making their way over here towards the third base. They will be denied. That was a lot of harassment, though. A lot of lost mining time here in the main, as well as the third. The Spire being lost is a pain, but it will be remade here in the natural. Scourge coming out. In large number, he produced a bunch of those right before the Spire went down to make sure that he had ample air defenses here. And it's actually two Stargate play. Oh, to Stargate here from Shuttle. Well, this is going to be rough then. We finished the plus one and the plus one armor never finished for Saxory. He may end up getting completely wiped out in the air as an Archon moves out. I, I got to tell you, this is a very scary attack. As a Zerg player, this is fearsome. Even with two Sunken Colonies here, one Archon plus this many Zealot will absolutely wreck you. It can kill this, these Sunken Colonies so quickly, it is insane. You have to target the Sunkens onto the Archon to get rid of that as soon as possible. But, you know, the Sim City is very nice here. I don't think the Archon can even slip by. Maybe it can slip by on this side. But it's very, very tight. Again, two Sunkens, not enough. A lot of Scourge coming in. He kills the Archon and not a moment too soon as the Scourge come in. They will connect with a lot of these Corsairs. Only two Corsairs do remain, but that's a lot of 
zealots here on the ground. They're going to be killing off a ton of drones. He needs to pull the drones here. The uh, Mutus can clear all of this, but he can't be losing too many drones. Drown to just 39 drones now. More Scourge are going to pop. That was a very close hold here, but it's not over yet. Still, Zealots running around everywhere trying to get more damage. They're going to run by probably into the main. At least a couple Zealots will make it through there. They are very, very low though and should be cleaned up by drones most likely. Drones should be able to defeat that. Hydra's actually going to come out here to clean that up. They will. Drones back to mining and 45 drones still remain. Not bad. Hey. Actually a really reasonable hold there from Saxory. He's lost his sixth hatchery, which is a pain. Do you want to get that out once again as soon as possible? That is a big part of your production. He will be limited until he gets that back up again. And Oh boy, we're going to have a big engagement here. But look at this. The Scourge actually connecting on a huge number of these Corsairs. So many of those went down, but even more of these Mutas did fall. And we don't have enough Hydra here yet. And GG is called. Very well done here by Shuttle. It was getting a little bit dicey when he had the Corsairs up here in the corner. And a lot of them got picked off, but he kept on the pressure here. Not enough Hydras were able to be produced by Saxory in order to hold this off and Saxory has to give up man if he had blocked this ramp I know it doesn't look like much but if you block the ramp here with like four or five hydras you can actually buy a lot of time the zealots will kind of bug out the the archon won't be able to attack but if you allow them to run up and get on top of everything it does not work out in your favor we don't have any templar in this army it's just pure Zealot Dark Templar. What a crazy build here from the man shuttle. Skipping over Storm completely. I don't know. I don't know if he even researched it actually. Just a ton of Dark Templar, Archon, and Corsair able to take down Saxory here. Will he do the same thing in game number two? We're about to find out. Okay, on to game number two. Saxory here in the top right. Feeling the heat after game number one. Shuttle brought it to him with that two Stargate build. I don't really like the two Stargate build most of the time. It feels like most Zergs have figured out how to deal with it. And Saxory did a pretty decent job dealing with the Corsair, but... The reason I don't really like it that much is probably because it limits the amount of Templar you can produce. It really slows down your follow-up attack. Hurts the number of storms that you're going to have with that attack. So, interesting adjustment to the uh, two Stargate play. Going for Mass DT and Zealot with just a, a sprinkling of Archons mixed in as well. Ends up going very, very well for him. Of course, he did sneak in with a couple of Zell uh, a couple of DTs a couple of times. It shouldn't have happened. Maybe if Saxory cleans up his play a little bit here. Makes sure that he doesn't allow those DTs to get that damage this time. He'll be able to take down Shuttle. Or at least give us a better show against him. Now here... On Tempest, he's sending out that drone to go ahead and grab a natural base. Of course, the probe is here waiting to block. So he's going to instead take it in the forward position. This forward hatchery is a little hard to defend. And he didn't send out a drone to go scout. It's an interesting thing to note here out of Saxory. No drone scout in this game. Instead, he's just going to be sending the Overlord over this direction. He will scout the natural base here relatively soon, but... This is not the situation that I personally like to find myself in. I really want to find out if we're going for a gateway. If we're going to gate, did we go Nexus first? 
What's the timing on the forge? All of those things are very important to know, but Saxory doesn't seem to care here. He just wants to play his game, maximize his drones and their mining time. Maybe we'll get this gas up pretty early as well. So third base is on the way here at the natural. Natural base is here at the third. But everything will be fine once those two hatches are done. We'll just have to do a bit of a longer transfer. When we start sending drones towards that third base. But no big deal there. Having the forward hatchery does put you in a bit of a vulnerable, vulnerable position here as a Zerg player. The a resupply is very quick from the natural over here to the third base. But... It is a very open third. Can be quite vulnerable to attacks. Now, I want to see where he puts his hatchery. Is he going to go here? And then maybe here with an evil chamber there? And put Sunkins here? I think that might be the setup. I, uh, that or he could go hatchery here. With an evil chamber there. Maybe hatch, hatch, evil chamber. And then two Sunkins. We'll see what he decides to do here. Always interested to see the way the pro players lay out their buildings because so much thought does go into it, especially in this matchup. Zergs really need to pay attention to like where the larva is popping, like how they can utilize the eggs to block, all of that sort of good stuff. You know, how the drones can be transferred through the sim city so that you can block with the drone as well that could be a point in favor of putting the hatches this direction so that when the the sunkins are here then the drones can go through the wall as they transfer back towards the natural and in that way they will be able to uh, kind of body block and try to keep him alive against a zealot attack but we're actually uh gonna have a little attack before any of that sim city does come down here i don't know if lings just yet for our zerg player been skimping a bit it seems and four more lings are gonna pop out here but he loses one immediately that is a painful loss will be overwhelming this shortly but he's lost some mining time and more zealots are coming up here. We get this around now. Pretty decent surface area here from the lings, but good connections here. And holding the line very, very strong. He hasn't even lost a single zealot yet. This is one of the things that annoys me the most about these early ling fights is sometimes you will completely overwhelm and kill all the zealots and other times they will all survive with like one hp and it's super frustrating this is one of those latter times when all of the zealots are very very low and they all somehow manage to survive now we have to make even more lings here to try and deal with these drones are going down lings are dying here and look at this he's taking so much damage i think that we might actually see him tap out this is brutal. He lost so many drones. He lost another like four or five drones. He's still producing lings right now. And more zealots are going to arrive. This hatchery is getting very low. Everything is going bad right now for Saxer. He's going to go ahead and try to grab a hatch right here. But this hatch is getting super, super low. Okay, he will surround and try to kill these zealots. I think he's finally going to overwhelm them. But man... This is painful again with the two gateway play and the same build. Oh, I love it. I love it. Not exactly the same because we don't have the Citadel yet. We've gone for, I think, an earlier two Stargate. And the Citadel going to be coming down now. The DTs will be coming later. Couple cannons here on high ground. He does not want to get broken here. Can't be losing the cannon right now. But he did a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Look at how far behind we are now with the worker count. He's even going into... Oh, he's going Mass Hydra. Okay. 
Well, this is a uh, this is a point in favor for Saxory here. Saxory going to be going for just a few Scourge and straight on into Mass Hydra. So the Corsair can still kill Overlords, but it's not going to be nearly as effective as it was last game. We just don't have the same army composition here in this one. We're not going for that Mutalist play. So, oh, one Corsair goes down. Another does fall. Two already going down here is a big blow to the game plan for Shuttle. He's looking around for an Overlord. Not able to find one. That's a big round of Zealots. And see the power of just going for an early second gateway. He was able to put on so much pressure to this natural. And now he's just got another big wave of Zealot coming out here. He's about to hit that plus one. Corsair's here. Still not able to do anything. And this is a problem. This is the big problem with the two Stargate plays. Now not producing uh, Corsairs at all anymore. And the Hydras are coming forward. We've only got two cannons here on this high ground. Has Shuttle kind of played himself in this game. We're going to pop out a couple more Zealots here. And at Dark Templar should start soon. There we go. He cancels one Zealot. Starts a Dark Templar. Really needs some Dark Templar to pop out here. Sitting on the back foot now. With plenty of Hydras out on the map. Defending these Overlords. Wow, he's actually spreading Overlords right now. I usually don't spread my Overlords until... Most of these Corsairs are gone. We've still got five. That's a scary amount to deal with. And when you're spreading your overloads like this, like if he just runs around with an A-click all over the map, he should be able to pick off at least a couple overlords, which might end up supply blocking you here, which could be really devastating. Now, overlord speed is done. He's going to push up here towards this natural. We do not have Storm. DT going to move around the top side. He sees the overlord is there. Oh man, I think Shuttle might just be dead, guys. Zealots coming out here to the front to fight. There's a few too many Hydras to deal with. Shuttle running out of Zealots here, and he's not making enough cannon behind this. Only got one cannon warping in on this high ground. The Zealots will all melt. We're going to make an Archon because we don't have time for Storm. One cannon goes down. Archons are warping in here. What's it called? Summoning. Will be summoned. But unfortunately, that will fall as well. All the cannons go down. Sacks are we going to push forward for the win. However, Dark Templar are here in the main. Hilariously killing 8, 9, 10, 11 kills here in the main. I don't think it's going to matter. Too many gateways are about to fall here. He will cast a very nice storm. Dealing with a lot of these Hydras. Killing off even more drones. Oh my god. 14 kill. 16 kill. Are you kidding me? That is so many kills. And then we ha we've actually got a lot more zealots popping out here. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. What is this? Okay, we're going to get this Dark Templar. No, the Dark Templar survives. 19 kill Dark Templar. It's going to make its way over here. Start to kill even more drones. Are you kidding me right now? 23 kill Dark Templar. Holy. This is insanity, guys. <laughs> this is crazy. He's going to kill the hatchery as well. Hatchery's going to go down. I don't see where the uh, Corsairs went. I think they might have just flown in and died. Is that what we just saw? Yeah, the Corsairs just uh, disappeared off the map. That's a little bit funny. To find out what happened to those in a bit. Coming in with another round of Zealots here. It's going to push the issue. I just can be microed very well here, but that is a lot of Zealot. And GG is called the Hero Dark Templar. Taking this game away from Sanctuary. It was his game to lose there. That Dark Templar. Absolute hero in this game. Crazy, crazy number of kills there. Even killing off the hatchery. And winning 
this game for shuttle crazy but that's it for this daily dose of brood war episode guys thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you tomorrow